Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Kia Pro C GT, which starts at 37,590 euros. Our test vehicle is going to set you back just under 39,000 euros. In this video, we're going to check out what makes this car so sporty. You gotta say the sound is actually very loud for the car with only 204 horsepower. So while you're driving through town, everyone's gonna look at you and think, oh, what's that crazy car? And then they see it's a Kia, which is not a bad thing. But do you really need that sound on this car? I don't know. It also gives me some childhood flashbacks where you were driving with your bike and you put a can, like a cola can on the back of the wheel and then you just ride through there and it does that like metallic car sound. That's, in my opinion, how the car sounds. Not only is the car loud from the outside, it's also loud in the inside, due to the fact that we obviously have that duplex valve exhaust system in the back. The engine in this car is a 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine, which produces 204 horsepower and 265 newton meters of torque, with a top speed of 225 kilometers an hour. The engine is supposed to be getting you from zero to 100 in 7.5 seconds, so let's actually see how quick it can go. So in this, we do have a fairly sporty chassis, which really, really is amazing in cornering. If you take a look at this, we can go around these corners at a very good amount of speed and really not lose any traction. And just the amount of speed you can carry through those corners is just amazing. And you really never lose any amount of traction here and it just feels really great. You can really go through here. And I would have honestly not expected that from the price point that you're getting this car. Just the center of gravity and the way it feels around these corners is just amazing. Better than some other cars that we've tested which are actually supposed to be a little bit more sporty. But the one thing I'm not a big fan of is just the amount of momentum you get out of the lower um, RPMs on this car. It just takes a long time with only 204 horsepower to really start kicking up. But once you're going those higher speeds, it really, really feels great around the corners. But it really does miss that little punch at the start, which I would have really loved. They would have just put like a 250 horsepower engine in here. It just would have made it so much more better. But also the grip that you get out of this, the cornering is just great. You can also obviously manually change the gears with the paddles on the back. Or also if you want to switch this over, you can put it in there and you can manually adjust it. Um, which you can obviously do, but with the sound, it just, it's a really good experience that you're getting from this car and just, it's, I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe it, it's just really cool. Like, you did not expect it from this car. But in order to be so efficient around corners, you need to have a fairly decent CV value. So, you need to have a car that is very dynamic, uh, aerodynamically well made, so how well the air can go around the car. And this car has a value of 0.28. So let's check out what aerodynamic features the car has to get that CV value so low. In the front, we do have some fake and some non-fake intakes. For instance, our grill in front is pretty nice with these chrome touches and the black and red touches, as well as the GT logo on the side, which does make it look pretty cool and it's all real. In the bottom, we do have some bigger intakes as well, which are all real as well, with a little lip on the bottom and a big sensor, which kind of looks like a lip in my opinion. And then on the side, we do have a fake um, intakes here, but with these red touches, which you get on the GT. You do on the side also completely have, well not completely, but you have, geez, um, you have a fake and also non-fake on the bottom which help with the aerodynamic flow towards the wheel and then you have LED lights in the front which is pretty cool. Let's go over onto the side. The color on here is the green metallic color which is 650 euros extra. I'm not the biggest fan of it. In the configurator it was, it looked really bad but in reality it doesn't actually look that bad but with the red touches I'm not the biggest fan of it. On here we have 18 inch wheels with some bigger calipers and we also have the Michelin Pilot Sports wheel on here which are pretty nice. We also have keyless go and some automatically foldable side windows and again some nice bar going down on the bottom which looks pretty cool with the red touches as well. Then one thing I'm not the biggest fan of, you do have all of this in chrome which doesn't look that bad but this thing right here, I don't know why they made this, it looks like a, like a shark fin that you have on the top of the car. I just don't like the look of that, I don't know why they put that in there. Let's take a look at the back where you can see that it definitely is a coupe kind of sport back thing which does obviously help with the value of the CV value or the CV value, however it does compromise a little bit of trunk space. In here we have a big LED bar going through as well as the brake light on the top which looks pretty cool with a little bit of a spoiler. 
Then we do have some big exhaust in here, which we already checked out. And on the side back, we also have some fake touches right there, which look pretty cool, but they don't do anything. In the interior, we also have some sporty looks. For instance, we have this very, very nice leather on the seats, which are leather and also velour leather in the middle, which is really, really nice. And I love the stitching and then it goes up into the GT, which looks very, very nice. Love the seats. We also have GT down on the mats, which looks very, very nice. Just in general, very nice stitching as well. The wheel is amazing in my opinion. I love this wheel. We have GT on the bottom as well and just the feeling of it. It's, it's fairly slim and you have the pedals in the back which they don't feel the greatest. They're fairly bulky and fairly small but in general the wheel is just amazing. You don't have touch controls on here. Perfect combination of normal buttons and like scroll wheels kind of thing and just in general I love the touch of this thing. You also have a lot of red stitching throughout the car for instance on the side here and also on the gear selector down here which just looks very very nice and just makes the car feel a lot more sporty from the inside and special. I gotta say the seats in the back are very very comfortable. You have the same material as you have on the front so the velour in the seats as well which is really really comfortable and they just fit to your body very nicely. One thing I'm not a big fan of though is obviously because it's a sport car you usually sit fairly low in the car but then you lose a lot of um, foot room. So your foot room is not that nice and you don't have that much space on the foot, on the foot, on the feet. Um, however, you do have a good amount of headroom. Um, if you're a little bit taller, like uh, above 190 or six foot two, you're probably gonna head, hit your head on the top, but it's completely good headroom. You also have some storage space in here. You have a USB-C in the middle. You also have climate control in the back. And then what you do have, you have heated seats in the back as well, which comes with a com comfort package, which is only like 560 euros extra which is very nice. A lot of cars don't have heated seats in the back and this one does. You also, which is another nice thing, you have um, cup holders in the middle, but you can also flip over the middle console. So you can actually have a good amount of storage space in here as well. So you can put skis through there. But in general, very, very nice back as well. The ice fix points in here also very nice and easy to reach. So no doubt that this is a great back. Even though the car is a coupe or a sport back, sport back. It is actually fairly practical when it comes to the boot space. You also have an electrically um, opening tailgate, which is pretty nice. And the first thing you definitely notice in here is that you have this kind of rail thing in here, which is very, very practical. You can obviously also take it out if you don't want it, but you can move it alongside this rail and put anything behind it. So if you have small items in here, you can just put them behind them and it basically is a rail. So it doesn't, or it makes the items not shift around while you're driving sporty, which we just did. So that is very, very nice. And I like the function. In here, you have 594 liters of storage space. And if you have the seats folded over, like we do have, like we do have now, like we have now, um, we have 1,545, which is quite a lot actually. However, if you do want to put in some taller stuff, obviously because it is a f kind of sport back in the back, you're not going to be able to put the bigger stuff in here, but you do really have a big storage space. With, as well, you do have a little bit of a bigger lip, which is not the nicest thing. And then a good amount of storage space in there actually. And under here, we also have some stuff where you can put some stuff. So you actually have a very good amount of storage space in here. So do you lose a little bit of comfort with all the sportiness that the car offers? You certainly do. Obviously the car is meant to be a more of a sporty car. So the chassis is a little bit stiff and it's just sporty in general. That means over long periods of times when you're dra traveling a little bit further, it's gonna be a little bit harder on you and your butts are probably, or your butt is probably gonna hurt. If you have multiple butts, butts you should probably see the doctor. Um, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a sore butt after a little bit because it's just not that comfortable. Another thing that's not that nice is the surrounding view. You have a pretty small rear window because of the coupe. So the view out of the back is not that great, but for instance, you have a rear view camera, so it, it kind of fixes that. You also have fairly small side mirrors, which is also not another great thing. And just the sound in general. The sound is obviously very, very loud. You only have two modes, so the normal and the sport mode. And the sport mode obviously opens the um, valves. But it just makes the car, even the normal mode, fairly loud. I don't know if you can pick it up that much. Let's listen to it. I mean, that's completely normal. I was just accelerating at a normal speed. There was no, no kick down at all. Um, but it, it is fairly loud, but there are obviously a couple of comforting things in here. For instance, you have heated seats, you have a heated steering wheel, you have heated front seats, uh, front seats, front window, which comes with the comfort pack as well in the back, obviously, which is very nice. You also have memory function for the seat, electrical seat for the driver, but the seats as well are very, very comfortable. I personally really like them. They just they fit to your body very nicely. You also have a lot of assistance on here. So driver assistance, for instance, adaptive cruise control. You have lane assist, which I hate, for instance. I always turn that off. You have adaptive cruise control, like I said. You have a speed limiter. 
and um, speech control, blind spot mirroring stuff, of speech control, speak, speech recognition. So a lot of great stuff that really helps you when you're driving the car and just makes it a little more comfortable if you're going over long range. And in general, the interior really is nice in here. We actually have better quality than on a Golf R Performance, which is interesting. You get a very lovely steering wheel. The digital cockpit, obviously there's not much stuff to it. You only have two different modes, like I said, the normal and the sport mode. And those are the only thing that changes the layout of the cockpit. You do have the option of changing something in the middle, like showing how much you use, um, how much um, fuel you're using, how much you've driven, or your tire pressure, stuff like that. You also have an infotainment display in here, which is fairly big, does its job. A lot of physical buttons as well, some touchscreen buttons, which does work, it does its job. You have navigation stuff in there, so everything that you really need. You also have the JBL sound system, system in here, which is owned by Harman Kardon, or Samsung in general. So it's kind of a mixture between JBL and Harman Kardon. Nothing special, just a sound system, not compared to like an XC60 where you get the Bowers and Wilkinson sound system in there. But let's talk a little bit about the fuel consumption. So WATP claims around 6.5 up to 6.8. Obviously, because it's supposed to be a sportier car, you're usually going to be driving in the sport mode, and that is what I've been doing for the past couple of kilometers, or a couple of hundred kilometers. So my fuel consumption is currently at 10.7 liters. We have gotten it down to under that 10 mark, so around 9.8. I have seen some other tests where they really went for eco-friendly. If you're just going on the Autobahn and staying behind a truck, you can get it down to low three liter range, but that's obviously not combined or anything like that. So around seven, six, you can definitely get it down to that, I think. You can definitely get the car down there. You just got to stay in normal mode all the time. You obviously don't have eco mode or anything like that. So it's a little bit harder, but you just got to really focus on trying to get it low. Other than that, usually you're going to be at around, I'd say eight, nine liters. That's what you're usually going to be driving with. So what's my final verdict on the Kia Pro CGT? For the price that you're getting here, I think it's a very, very good car. It's practical. You can definitely take a family trip with it. You have a lot of trunk space. You have a pretty cool engine, which obviously I would have loved a little bit more power on the lower ends, but it does have a very good center of gravity and just is a pretty fun car to drive in general. And like I said, very practical. So in my opinion, it's a very good car to get for the price and also with the design. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already so we can review more cars in the future. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.